I'm hoping certainly that uh, you know we don't get into a, a kind of a fear kind of cycle that developed there with uh, with uh, this uh, 08 uh, circumstance. But I don't see the basis for that uh, in the sense that uh, this is a, a dollar depreciation push. I think on on uh, dollar denominated world rice trade. And I think there's some uh, really important limits to that just because we've got a huge crop uh, that's out there to be marketed. Okay. Um, last question. Can I give it to him because we're really like running? Uh, okay. Ibu, you will have the last question. Okay. Okay. Special product uh, for the, the rice. So, uh, in in the future, I think all the panelists should be. Uh, uh, I, I say for the opinion of the all panelists regarding of the the political commodities of the rice. How uh, we want to incorporate the private sector to this business, uh, because government cannot. Uh, spend a more national budget for the, say, uh, improvement in the irrigation, improvement in the R&D, I and mean, it should be incorporated at the private sector in this piece, in this price production. But how how we can uh, approach in this action? Thank you. Well, it, it certainly is a conundrum, I think, for the for the global rice market. Um, I mean, you can look at uh, Thailand, for example, very much uh, uh, in terms of the trade perspective, it, it's very much a private sector driven. But the government, um, over the last couple of years, decided to intervene with high, high producer prices and ended up with huge stocks. And that's really put the Thailand, and, and may I, I agree with you, Jai, that made it really not the reference, uh, world reference price, uh, uh, and I, I think Vietnam sort of assumed that role really over the last couple of years. But my sense is that the, the challenge, it seems to me, for, for Asian countries is going to be how do you ease out of the state trading, the desire to want to intervene and how do you promote, what, what do you do to incentivize the pub, the private sector to become more active in terms of uh, participation in this market? It, it, it's, a, it's a serious challenge and uh, again, I don't think there are many easy answers um, because rice is just so <coughs> fundamentally important to welfare and, 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 and concerns of, of the population. I just want to add that uh, I, I, you don't expect rice to be freely traded in our generation or maybe in the foreseeable future. I think rice always will be interesting, both at the production, consumption, and the trade level. I think the only thing I look at it, instead of country putting quantitative restrictions like export ban or some sort of thing, uh, if they can convert that to some sort of tarification, uh, that will be much better in terms of stabilizing the market rather completely staying out of the market. If you keep the market smaller, uh, then any sort of demand or supply side, the price has to move that much further. 
the impulse when they stop. I think, I think the important thing is somehow the global trade volume has to increase. You know, maybe closer to what we have seen in wheat, corn, or soybeans, uh, from 5 to 10 or 15 percent. That will stabilize the market much better. Even if we have state intervention, state trading, still it's also good for the market, or good for the price. Okay, uh, with that, I would like to close the session. And can we thank the uh, panelists for a wonderful talk? Good evening and I hope you